So my name is Fiorenza and uh, I am from Italy. I've uh, been living in a uh, few different countries uh, the last 15 years. I've been living in Paris, did my study there, uh, moved to uh, UK, to London about 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, I work in, uh, in a company called Carl Lyons. Uh, we run obviously the Festival Creativity in France and a few other regional uh, creative festivals. So it all started, okay, let's think about it was 10 years ago. So I moved from Paris to London and uh, in Paris I was uh, working as a journalist for a news agency uh, and a magazine. And uh, when I went to, to London, I didn't really know I wanted a new challenge. I uh, was looking for the next step. Yeah, I put my CV out there and they, uh, they called me and they said, OK, Fiorenza, you know, we're looking for someone to launch a new uh, awards competition, which is uh, for PR and marketing agencies. Because as you know, Cal Lions was uh, an advertising festival and they wanted to change their image. They wanted to become a festival open to all different uh, creative disciplines. So they wanted someone that was not from the advertising world, like myself, to work from, with them on developing a new awards for non-advertising agencies, so PR, communication agencies. So I launched the PR Lions Awards and it was uh, hard because, you know, uh, trying to make agencies that are not advertising agencies understand that the, the, the can is relevant to them that was hard, and, uh, but uh, quite successful and we worked hard you know, in order to include uh, the creative community from public relations, from uh, also marketing, communication. Then uh, the year after that, we decided to launch a new competition which I was responsible for and it's the Mobile, mobile uh, Advertising Awards, still part of Cannes. So basically my role was to uh, look at the industry and understanding where the, the industry is going, the creative industry is going and perhaps include new competition that could be relevant to, to us and could gather people from different uh, disciplines. Christmas market. Fish, chips, cup of tea, Mary Poppins, London. Busy. AI. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. Brave. Orderly. Brooklyn. Red. The Pesh Mode. Talent. Home. Passion. Um, black. I think the fact that I started 10 years ago, 10 years ago, it was a crucial moment for Carl Lyons because they really wanted to change the way the industry was looking at them and not just as an advertising festival, but as a global creative festival, including all creative sectors and disciplines. That was the first change they made. And it was, I don't know if you know that, but they were called Carl Lyons Advertising Festival. And so they rebranded everything and they rebranded it to start with their, their name and they're now Carl Lyons International Festival of Creativity. That was a big change for them. But then in the recent years, uh, I think a big change that's been happening is uh, the audience actually, the customers, people that come into Cannes. Uh, when you come to Cannes, uh, you don't see just creative agencies anymore, but a lot of consultancies, you know, the Accenture, the Deloitte kind of guys, and also clients, uh, more and more clients coming, uh, which is great uh, because, you know, we, we didn't have many clients coming back in the days. Um, and now, well, I can name a few, I mean, from the very big brands, you know, like McDonald's or Microsoft or Nike or any other big, you know, brand you would, would find an interest in coming to Cannes and to network with agencies, but also small uh, local brands, uh, because obviously Cannes is a great opportunity for everybody to, um, to get to know uh, other creatives and uh, really share ideas, be inspired and, um, and you know, get to learn also from uh, the bravest uh, brands, the bravest uh, agencies through the, the work, the work that got to win at the festival, which is really important, I think, if you're a client. I think because we are 
going through some tough time for the industry, for the creative industry. And what I mean by tough, uh, the budgets are not the same as they were 5, 10, 15 years ago. So agencies are thinking carefully where to spend their money. I think entering awards is important because it allows you to really ch challenge your team. So if you work in an agency, you're the CCO, obviously entering Kant or any, any other awards, you can challenge your team to make braver work and to, and to make sure that they feel motivated, right? And it's also a great way to benchmark because when you go to Cannes and you enter work, you, you're looking at all the other uh, entrants, the other agency entering, and the level of work is really high, right? So you can really benchmark and think about where do you sit in that ecosystem. The Glass Lion was a great, uh, a great initiative for Cannes. And the Glass Lion uh, really celebrates work, brave work from any agencies that shatters those stereotypes which are related to gender. So we're really fighting for, we're really proud uh, to, to have our uh, say and to, and to be at the table, you know, people fighting for, um, you know, gender inequality, basically. We get entries from everywhere in the world, the jury, they're really proud towards this kind of work and um, we um, devolve the money uh, to usually to the to the to the to the charity or the non-profit organization or the organization that uh, tackle gender stereotypes so the money that get entered that, that we get from the awards get 100 percent devolved devolved to uh, this association or no profit organization that uh, tackle those, uh, those stereotypes, which is great. And another initiative we have uh, uh, along those lines is um, the, um, uh, the, the, the Grand Prix for Good, which is also um, basically, we, uh, we have a jury that judge all the charity work that get entered into Cannes and uh, they award the best one, so it's really, you know, it's really important, I think, to, um, to put this kind of work under the spotlight, to be honest. We created machines to simplify our lives. Today, we can't live without them. Beyond the convenience of our fridge freezers are the bionic limbs that restore us, the smartphones that connect us, the rockets that send us into space. From steam engines to search engines, where will they take us tomorrow? Initiative Array was 100% uh, involved with, this, uh, with the creation of this uh, uh, competition, let's call it like that, Future Lions, really to award and celebrate work that um, uh, breaks, uh, um, you know, it's breakthrough, breakthrough work um, that look really at the future as if the future was the present. So brave work that uh, really uh, uh, use, perhaps, you know, it's, it's interesting how the work awarded in the Future Lion uh, uh, or the people awarded for this um, lion were usually working with uh, a lot with digital and new technologies like uh, artificial intelligence, VR, AR, uh, which uh, are obviously part of so many campaigns that we get to see now. But the future lion really interesting because uh, of the people and, and, and work awarded in this, uh, for this particular um, lion, uh, we can see really where the future lies, you know, in terms of new technology being used, digital campaigns, how uh, creative and tech, which actually was the one of the of the subject of my talk in Riga yesterday, how creativity, human creativity and technology, they collaborate uh, and they are two forces that cannot live one without these days, one without the other. So um, really interesting uh, the future life for that reason, I guess. I tell you one of the reasons why it was interesting, apart from the creative side of things, I think the fact that uh, the client, Volvo Trucks, if you think about who is the audience of that campaign, right? So you have, uh, uh, it is a campaign that is for, for trucks, so, so it's not the general consumers, right? So first of all, really difficult insight, really difficult uh, kind of campaign to kind of be creative about because uh, it is not, uh, you know, you're not addressing 
the, 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 the general audience. You're addressing like people that basically a company that buy trucks, really. So that was really interesting the way they they they, they address uh, that um, the particular consumer set, and also the fact that um, that campaign helped Volvo really to generate so much more sales. So that campaign was really successful in terms of results and effectiveness. Because most of the time we think about the creative side of the campaign, the idea and how it was executed. But let's think also about results. Let's think also about how effective was that campaign. And that campaign, I can tell you, uh, because of that campaign, Volvo trucks, they, 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 their, their uh, return on investment was amazing after that. So we actually use that as a case study for like when we talk about effectiveness and uh, creativity. When a campaign is highly creative, most of the time it's also highly effective and that results in uh, uh, an increased ROI for the brands. So after the festival, we, uh, we look at all the content that has been entered, all the uh, seminars and the workshop that happened in Cannes in, in June, and we basically summarize that in trends. We try to identify teams and trends, usually top three trends uh, for, the, for the year, that will definitely influence the following year, so the 2019. And I can tell you, one of the trends we, re we identified uh, this year, we, we definitely we'll see next year as well is the um, is the technology uh, new technology new tech trend so using artificial intelligence using vr ai and so on for uh, to make a brave uh, global sometimes campaign also local campaigns that are really uh, making uh, the audience um, capturing audience, audience attention in a new way. So for example, we had this big winner. So basically, uh, the campaign was about, it was done for the Times publication, and, um, and basically the, the speech that John Kennedy was never able to make because obviously he was assassinated in 1963. And uh, what happened, a, a, group, a group of engineers and um, sound designer worked for months with the creative agency to um, like look at over 200 speeches that Jeff, uh, John Kennedy made and to identify uh, the sounds, the accent uh, through artificial intelligence and machine learning. And at the end of this uh, month, three months, I think, of working together, they basically came up with uh, the speech that John Kennedy never made uh, in New York and uh, Washington it was. In a world of complex and continuing problems, in a world full of frustrations and irritations, America's leadership must be guided by the lights of learning and reason, or else those who confuse rhetoric with reality and the plausible with the possible will gain the popular ascendance with their seemingly swift and simple solutions to every world problem. And it was great because um, that for the Times publication was an amazing way to connect with their audience, with their subscribers, followers, and then also to increase sales. Because um, after that, uh, they, they, they seen an increase in the subscription of the, of the publication. So that was a great, so using content, using new technology to, uh, in this case, artificial intelligence, machine learning, to connect with audiences and to create really captivating content, right? And then we're going to see more and more of that uh, next year, I'm sure. And definitely the trends of brands doing um, work for good causes, as we were speaking about before the, the Dove campaign, we, we, we're going to see more and more of that, uh, definitely. Uh, brands engaging with um, societal issues, let's say, not only gender stereotype, but like racism or um, other, other tackling other environmental causes. Environmental causes is something that we definitely we will see more uh, being tackled by agencies and brands alike. And uh, I think these major trends like the tech, new tech trend and the um, uh, creativity for good sort of trend, we're definitely going to see more of that next year. Uh, we are a global festival and we receive around 35,000 uh, entries from all over the world. Okay, if you think about that, you will always have 
some kind of work which look kind of similar to something that was sent perhaps by Germany versus Guatemala and somehow the idea is very similar and you cannot really, you know, it's, it's very important not to kind of uh, persecute, I say, I say uh, agencies just because their work looks, looks slightly similar to something that we already seen two years before or in another country because it's easy, I mean, we are like all creatives and, you know, it's, it's easy to sometimes get similar, very similar ideas. That doesn't mean that it's got executed the same way because the countries are different, the market is different, the audience is different. So sometimes, you know, people, they, uh, when in a jury room, you would have some jurors saying, okay, I think I've seen this before. It's just a feeling that you obviously seen something similar, but that doesn't mean it's exactly the same. Another thing we do, though, to avoid, um, uh, you know, getting to the point where the campaign is exactly the same, is that to check every single entry, every single work that gets uh, entered into the festival. And we hire, uh, we are really proud of that because we have uh, a pool of, uh, a team of people, uh, very senior actually, awards manager, that check the work, check everything, uh, eligibility dates, synopsis, videos, um, and they do make, uh, you know, some, uh, some checks to kind of ensure that the work uh, is, uh, uh, is definitely not a copy of something else or uh, has been entered following all the requirements that we do have some rules, obviously, um, that you can download from the website. So what I'm saying is that we do have people that check the work every single entry and when they get to the festival they get judged usually we don't have this problem so we tackle the problem before uh, it becomes bigger i guess before we get to can and uh, and if we ever find out that obviously the entry is uh, very similar to something else and uh, and we have a doubt on uh, on something we do email the company we do email the agency and we ask for clarification we ask for documentation proof uh, of concept proof that the entry is, uh, is original from, from them and, and obviously if wars come to wars and we find it is exactly the same of something else, it happened in the past very rarely, but we do disqualify the work and we don't allow you the, the specific, that's the campaign, sorry, the, the agency, we don't allow the agency to enter our festival for a several for several years, so we are quite uh, tough. <laughs> so we don't, it doesn't happen very often because we do, we do check everything multiple times. I think it's like, a, it's been a bit of a witch hunt, you know, this fake news thing, because I think at the end of the day, I mean, we live in a, in an era of uh, digital and uh, we are always connected, you know, always on, as they say. So we basically access our Instagram and Facebook and blogs and internet every day. And then, you know, it's not only about uh, influential people that can influence us, but also our neighbors, our friends, people that we know, I mean, they have their own opinion and they can publish anything, right? So we need to be careful, you know, like uh, make sure that we don't, uh, um, go after people just because uh, they have an opinion about something and uh, uh, well the other side of the story is obviously fake news they we, we never stop talking about how um, you know there was uh, a big uh, where, where they did for instance the American election you know Russian being you know influencing the election fake news it was a big uh, part of the story but um, I think this problem has existed since uh, we had uh, in the, uh, the internet, you know, like uh, starting slowly, but um, I don't see how, um, I think we need to be kind of quite selective with what we believe into, with what we are, how we access information and uh, from what sources. For me, being an ex-journalist, is all about sources. So if your source is reliable or not, but it's at the end of the day, it's up to you to understand uh, and to make your choice, right? And, um, and it's harder nowadays. When I was a journalist, the internet was uh, just at the beginning, I guess. 
now it's sadder because you get bombarded with uh, stories, you know, and how do you find out what is true, what is not? I think they, I personally, I think there is still some publication and, um, and, 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 uh, and news that are, are trustworthy, but um, at the end of the day, I think it's about knowledge and it's about trying to kind of really really select what uh, what what is um, is trustworthy and not and it's a hard job for you know for everybody to do that but um, I think uh, yeah select your sources carefully I think I think that's that's my advice I think um, well the first thing we need to think about is that let's not forget that uh, machines like artificial intelligence they only know what you input in them so the data that you you give them they do work on that data they do uh, analyze the data they do uh, give you insight based on the data that you give them so it's all about what kind of data what kind of information you're gonna uh, you're gonna you, you, you're going to basically uh, input into the uh, artificial intelligence or machine. So that's the first uh, thing I would say. And then obviously uh, the fact that um, we cannot deny the fact that in artificial intelligence is really helping human creativity. Uh, uh, in uh, obviously to as I said before, producing. Uh, captivating content, which was uh, some, we have some example in Cannes, we discussed that before, uh, producing also um, data that help perhaps, uh, you know, um, understanding your, your your audience better, your consumers better, so that data obviously uh, will give you a better understanding of how to, um, what kind of medium to use to produce your campaign and how to address your audience. So that's helpful, but at the same time, let's not forget that human Intelligent, sorry, artificial intelligence. Um, artificial intelligence cannot uh, create emotions. Uh, emotions are humans, and at least until now, artificial intelligence cannot create emotion. And why I'm talking about emotion specifically is because emotion are strictly connected to creativity. And we, we prove in Cannes with the biggest campaign, the, 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 the most successful campaigns we had in Cannes, not necessarily the biggest one, could be a, a small campaign, but the most successful, they're definitely the ones that use emotions to connect with the audience, with, to connect with consumers. So emotions, they are human and they are not, you know, you cannot get them from a machine or from uh, artificial intelligence. So it's important to, to understand that, um, yes, artificial intelligence, is playing and will play a big role in creativity, but uh, ideas and emotion, I will put that in the pot also ideas, obviously, and emotion, let's leave them to humans. So it's, yes, actually technology, I mean, if you think about, you know, the fact that we are always connected and then you're thinking sometimes, okay, so technology helping helping us, helping humans to be more connected because if you think about the fact that you can uh, talk and, um, and, and see someone living uh, the opposite side of the world from you, then yes, we are more connected than ever, right? But uh, at the same time, you're thinking, okay, uh, I don't have face-to-face uh, -face, uh, interactions anymore. Uh, so the face face to face interaction are replaced with uh, digital virtual interactions and uh, that's a problem obviously uh, and uh, we need to think about you know i think i think i give the responsibilities also to the big tech companies and uh, the people that are really working like for uh, tele telecommunication the telecommunication brand they need to really find a way to uh, and i was uh, talking about that yesterday find a way to really um, make um, the use of technology uh, more responsible and i think there are some uh, progress in that so the fact that for example samsung uh, started a new app called tribe which basically, uh, once you install this app in your Samsung device, in your phone, uh, would give you a timer basically, where after a certain amount of time you spend on your phone, it would tell you to stop and it would switch your phone off. And, uh, uh, and it's really interesting how Samsung is approaching that, really the fact that you said, you know, the fact that we are always on and we never switch off the phone to have that actual face-to-face uh, -face interaction with people, then, Samsung is telling you, okay, it's now time to switch your phone off and go out there in the world and, you know, do other things. So that, I think, is a great example how tech brands like Samsung, Apple is doing something similar, uh, are 
trying to give back to consumer the responsibility of, uh, of being disconnected. Because at the end of the day, it's in our hands. But brands like these guys here at Samsung that are helping to kind of reminding us that uh, we need to switch off sometimes. So I think then this is a new movement coming from uh, tech companies and telecommunication companies. But at the same time, it's our responsibility. We are like we are scrolling through devices all day. I think I, I was actually reading this article talking about the fact that we get um, through our devices, we get 10,000 different messages from brands per day. If we were the, the average person, would get about 10,000 per day. And, you know, actually, they say that creativity is uh, boosted, uh, is fueled by daydreaming. This is a study that's been done by the Academy of uh, Science in the US. And daydreaming boosts fuel creativity, but you only do daydreaming when you don't do anything. So daydreaming meaning inactivity. So you daydream between one activity and the other. So if we scroll through devices all day long, we don't, daydream, we don't daydream. So daydreaming comes uh, less and less uh, easy to us. And uh, so creativity, creative ideas, creative thoughts. So less daydreaming, less creative thoughts. And so that's really not good, right? So if we want to produce creative work, we want to have creative ideas, we need to daydream more and uh, scroll to devices less. In virtual reality, I mean, from my perspective, being uh, looking at the work that get entered into, well, using virtual reality in Cannes, Lions, uh, I think uh, everybody's talking about virtual reality right now, but I think we're not there yet. So virtual reality is a slow burner. So it's something that will develop over time, definitely. Uh, will increase, uh, uh, I mean, it will be, uh, there will be, the, already there is an increased use of artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and so on, but in, in creative work, in campaigns. But uh, I think we're not there yet. I think agencies and companies in general still need to crack virtual reality, you know? They're not, they're not doing it uh, so great yet. I think they need to be, uh, yeah, I think they will, they, there is some work to be done in that sense. Uh, and we are not there yet. And I have this feeling that uh, there will be, it, it will be a slow progression of, on the use of virtual reality to really influence consumers, to really do great stuff, you know? So I think we need to watch that space. <laughs>Open to, 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 you know, to for us at least to come to Cannes to judge our awards, to be there on stage for us, to talk about creativity. He, he's always uh, he, he's so passionate. I really admire that passion in him. And it started from from nothing, you know, small agency, then became really big quickly. Uh, we had him in Cannes this year. Uh, very, we gave him the um, a prize to to his career. And it was amazing to see him uh, on stage, also quite emotional, I, I'm sure. I mean, who wouldn't be emotional, you know, in that case. And the second one I would go with um, is Ray Namoto. Ray Namoto. Ray Namoto. Design is something that you would miss if it didn't exist.
a, especially a good piece of design, is something that should exist, even if you didn't think it should exist. And then if it disappeared from the world, the world would miss. From uh, we, we talk about him, he's now is now doing his own uh, he's got his own agency, his own consultancy, and uh, uh, and he was uh, really uh, for us a great uh, collaboration with him on the future lions, on the judging side of things. And Ray has been uh, again. I mean, I admire the work he's done uh, with his previous uh, his previous agency, and uh, I think uh, great things will will come from him uh, from you know, the new venture that uh, he's got now. We had her judging our awards, and she's a great example for me of, uh, of great human being, and she's also a great professional, and the name is Wendy Clark. Wendy Clark. I was a shift manager at McDonald's when I was 16 years old. She's been called one of the most important women in marketing. The content and conversation around your brands is happening without you. So therefore, you must figure out how to partner with these consumers. You must figure out how to create a one plus one equals three scenario and outcome. She's, uh, she's really like uh, helping us developing the glass lion, um, strong advocate of uh, effectiveness in marketing. She worked with us on the Effective, Effectiveness Lion Award. Um, yeah, I like her a lot and she, uh, she's been great at developing you know, uh, the brand. Coca-Cola and uh, before that working agencies, she's, she's done a great job and she's now, you know, she's been to Cannes many years, so she's been a friend of the festival, but also a great human being for, for me. Yeah. Yes, okay, tips um, on how to win a lion, on how to uh, craft your work, right? So I think something we always say to, say to agencies, the first thing you need to think about is um, like the case, how, how, you package, how you package your case film. Because as you know, one of the requirements for Car Lions is not compulsory, but it's highly recommended to enter your work with a case film. Two minutes, maybe even less, one minute and a half, one minute will be enough. But how you package that is really important. Uh, you want to you know, think about uh, subtitles, for, a for example, if uh, the content is not in English. You want to think about uh, perhaps uh, voiceover, which, is, uh, which in, some, in some situations, in some circumstances, may make, make the work more impactful. Uh, and you want to think about also sound, I mean, uh, music, use of music, because uh, you, know, you don't want like a, a one minute and a half case film uh, that the jury will hate just because uh, the song or what the music is not really, like, I know this, this is very technical, but uh, it's important because don't forget that the jury will be judging uh, about five, six, thousand pieces of work during the festival and uh, they are tired you know uh, eight hours a day maybe ten hours a day they not even seeing the daylight forget the parties forget this, the, the festival they are locked into a room for like five days so okay so think about that and then imagine how many case films they watch per day 100 150 they need to be impactful. So the case film is important, the synopsis is also important, but the case film definitely, um, uh, use of production need to be slick. And the second thing I would uh, say, uh, results, results, results. Because unless you enter the craft lion, which obviously are focusing on the craft and the idea uh, and the execution, we're thinking about integrated campaign. Integrated campaign, they need also results. So you need to prove that yes, you had a great idea. Yes, it was well executed. But you also need to have, uh, you know, you also need to be effective. So how many more uh, products did you sell? How the audience reacted, and uh, uh, the, the, there was an increased awareness of the brand, for example. So you, you don't forget to to make uh, your results standing out because the jury will look for that. So the production of the case film, the results, and the third thing I would say is um, definitely uh, straight to the point. So what, what I mean by that, like when you write your synopsis or you produce your case film, don't uh, flood uh, the, 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 the video with all the details and people don't get it, you know, like the jury need to be, uh, you need to follow a narrative. 
It's a bit like, you know, all creative know, should know how to do storytelling. So storytelling, apply that to, your, uh, to the production of your entry. So following a, a clear, simple narrative, uh, stick to the main points like brief solution results and expand after. So use the first 30 seconds of your case film to really get the idea across and then you expand on, uh, on the general uh, details. But important to get your idea across and I would say 30 seconds, the first 30 seconds of the case film. That's very important. Uh, there were some brilliant moments of insight um, and excitement and energy and passion uh, and there were certainly a few ideas that uh, absolutely impressed. Welcome to the uh, Young Lions Dream Competition when it's announced. It's like a mixed feeling. Shaking. I want to cry. We win a slave and it's, I can't believe it, you know. So each competitor gets a great amount of exposure to the advertising world just by winning this event. Suffer, suffer a lot. I think it's a once in a lifetime experience. You will learn a lot. It's fucking awesome. Their inseng최고. Couple of things here. Uh, first, uh, choose carefully who do you want to work for? Because yes, you can work for a big global agency, but ask yourself if you're gonna be given the opportunity to, 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 to do something, because sometimes it's easy to, for a young creative person, I guess, to get lost into the big agency world. Maybe perhaps start with a small local agency, learn more, learn how to kind of do the work, and uh, then maybe, do the jump, you know, to a big agency. It doesn't mean that it has to be that, that way for everybody, but um, yeah, so think about who you do want to work for, if an independent agency, a consultancy, a brand, you know, the, the ecosystem has been, is quite different from what it was even 10 years ago, so now there is a lot of opportunity in front of creative people. And sometimes brands, they have in-house teams, in-house creative teams, so it necessarily they need to be an agency, perhaps a brand. So, you know, what, what's best for you? think about that and the second thing I think it would be be brave so when you start working creative I think don't if you're allowed I mean to if you if you are given the uh, the right uh, infrastructure the right um, uh, people the right team of people to work with you have the right boss <laughs> be brave about what you do don't be scared of uh, pitching and suggesting ideas that are uh, be out of, uh, you know, something that has not been done necessarily by that agency before, something that the client doesn't really um, look at in the past. So I try to be brave. I think brave, being brave is hard these days because everybody try to kind of, you know, play safe in that sense. But uh, I think brave campaigns, they go far, especially at Cannes Lions. <laughs> And then, uh, so I think it's like, uh, try to surround yourself with uh, people that uh, you can learn from. Doesn't that to be your boss necessarily, someone from maybe your team, but also perhaps from your, you know, outside that, there is a lot of mentorship programs that we do run, also can, you know, for young talents, uh, young creatives. So yes, try to kind of uh, learn from the best, and if you can.